Let's take this footage that you can see on the left and turn it into this 2D slash stop motion animation that you can see on the right. This is a really fun one, so let's jump right into it. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. I'm just doing some work at my standing desk. Thank you to Flexispot for sponsoring this video. They sent me this easy one standing desk in exchange for a miniature review. It's a motorized desk that you can adjust with a little control panel and you can choose between sitting and standing heights, which are customized or choosing manual heights for whatever you want. The motors are pretty quiet and the max weight is plenty, around 70 kilograms, which is enough even for my robust setup. Assembling the desk was pretty simple with clear instructions and quality parts, and it's pretty customizable as well. In fact, I ended up using my old desktop instead of the one they sent me as it suits my workspace better. They also sent me a cable spine to keep everything tidy, but I chose to buy my own CPU holder. When it arrived, I didn't trust the screws to hold it in place, so I bolted it through the desktop instead. Overkill possibly, but I'll sleep better at night for sure. I had some trouble with the desk being in object detection mode without me realizing, but a quick look through the troubleshooting guide on the website solved my issue as it's pretty well documented. So far it's been really great and honestly my back really does feel that much better because I can now switch between sitting and standing. So if you're struggling with that sort of thing too, I can definitely recommend the FlexiSpot Easy One Standing Desk. There's a link in the description with all the things you need, but for now, back to the video. Okay, so the first step is to take this piece of footage that I downloaded from videos.pexels.com, which is a free video resource website, uh, and pop it into After Effects so that we can start changing the frame rate and exporting it as a JPEG sequence. So we need to create a new comp from this selection and just go to the composition settings, which are off screen. <laughs> Very useful. Uh, I'm just going to turn this into a square, 2160 by 2160, and reposition the footage so that our lemon guy is in the middle. And then this hand pops out of the hole and takes this lemon away. No idea what this footage is actually used for <laughs> or is useful for in any situation other than mine, but hey ho, there we go. Um, the first step, open up Media Encoder and drag your composition into Media Encoder like so. Then open up the um, encoding settings and make sure you're on format JPEG sequence. And we're just going to scroll down on the video tab and change the frame rate to 12. This gives us 12 frames per second on our footage. You can do 12 or 24, depending on whether you want to animate on ones and twos or just twos. Once that's done, you'll have a sequence of JPEGs here in a folder. And this has basically reduced the frame rate. And when you see what this looks like in Adobe Animate, you'll notice it does give it that kind of nice stop motion-y effect. So open up a new document in Adobe Animate. I'm going to make this one 1080 by 1080. Uh, I think I actually re-exported the footage at 1080, not 2 on 60, um, in the encoding settings of Media Encoder as well. Go to File, Import to Stage and click your first image and then Yes on the pop-up box and all of your images will be imported to a single frame a piece into Adobe Animate. This is fine, but I actually wanted it half speed um, because we really wanted a 24 frames a second so we can animate on twos. So we can just select all our frames and drag it out until the little two times symbol comes up. And this makes each image last two frames. Now, the rest of this process is very simple. Uh, I'm just going to create a new layer on top of my footage. And the reason we do it as a JPEG sequence rather than importing a video is because then if you experience any lag or anything like that in Adobe Animate, it's not going to make your animation out of sync whilst you're working on it. So make a bunch of layers on top of your content. I've got one here for arms, face, blush, and a layer for the color palette. But this is basic animation at this point. We've got all of our frames um, of our background footage on a layer beneath, and I'm just going through. And to make sure that you're doing this correctly, you need to pick out some key points within your animation. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, the camera in this animation has shake on it. It's a moving camera. So even if your object is static, like our lemon is for the first half of this clip, there's actually going to be movement. And if you draw your content as if it's not moving, then it's obviously going to jump around the lemon. His face is going to wibble and wobble all over the place, which is no good. To help avoid this, you need to go and find key points within your animation where there is a clear uh, pose for your character. So for example, when he is first grabbed here, that is a very clear pose. I can clearly imagine what this pose is going to look like. As he's lifted up in the air, perhaps that's another good clear pose as well. Basically, this gives us a place for us to position all of our character's elements. So let's do this first pose here first, for example. First pose first, that makes sense. Um, this little resting pose at the start of the animation. He's happy, he's sitting on the table, he's got his arms like up against what would be his hips if he weren't a lemon. Um, 
<clears throat> now, the first up until the point where the hand grabs him on that frame that we drew originally, this lemon doesn't move. But, however, the camera does, as you can see. So if we were just to use that same drawing, it wouldn't work because it would be jumping all over his face. So we go to a key point, perhaps where he notices the hand behind him, and we draw the face in the right position. And I'm using the hair here on the little um, lemon nub, I don't know what that's actually called, the bit where it would attach to the vine, um, as a, a way to sort of define where the face is going to be. Okay, And again, just adding and changing the arms in and things like that. What this does is give us keyframes so that when we come to animate the frames in between, it's much, much easier to judge the amount of distance that has moved, essentially. Uh, judge the camera's movement in relation to our animation. So you can see here, uh, I just um, filtered down my layers a bit. I've just drawn everything on one layer and then added like the blushing or the crying on a separate layer. So here, for example, as well, um, he starts to get the lemon dragged back into the hole. The head's going to roll backwards. The eyes are going to start to disappear behind the head as well as the hair. So this is another key pose because it indicates that change in direction, uh, rotation. OK, so just going through and tweaking these up because these are going to be our true key poses that we animate between. OK, I think I add a couple more in at this point where the hands are sort of disappearing down the hole just to give us that sense of timing. And then from there, remove all the extra frames I don't need so I know what I'm working with. So taking a look at this little animation here, we've got these keyframes. Our first pose here, our second pose, third where he starts to get grabbed. So that you can see a lot of movement there. In the next pose, um, he's lifted up off of the floor and I forgot to draw his hair. So let's quickly add his hair in. <laughs> so we have um, four poses where he's lifted off the floor, which is great. And then in the next pose, he's starting to be dragged down. So these are our key moments and they give us that sense of timing, that sense of movement that we need. The next part is just to animate between these points. OK, now, luckily, there's a lot of movement here, but where there's no movement in the lemon, all we need to do is make sure we're compensating for the camera's movement when we're animating those frames. So let's go ahead and do that then. You can see here that I'm just starting off by doing the simplest parts uh, where there's very clear movements like at the end or where there's no movements at the beginning where the lemon is actually still. And then once those bits are feeling a bit more fleshed out, so I've gone into the middle point between each of those keyframes, I can then continue on the harder parts as well. Essentially, I'm finding the middle point between each of the keyframes that I've drawn and adding in a drawing. And then that gives me half the amount of time to make a mistake, if that makes sense, between those two new keyframes. So I'm essentially filling things in by halves, making a point A and a point B, and then making a drawing in the middle. So that would actually be point A and point C and then drawing point B. OK, then between A, B and C, I'm having a an, another drawing drawn in the middle. So working kind of outside inwards in order to make sure that when I am drawing, I'm compensating for the camera's movements and things like that. But apart from that, at this point, it's literally just drawing frame by frame, classic tweens, um, classic tweens, classic in-betweens, not Adobe's animate classic tweens, but a classic method of in-betweening. <laughs> um, and then it's just going through and adding in um, all those extra in-between frames. And once you've done that, you've got a relatively smooth animation. And then at this point, I just added a little bit of color onto the arms. So you can see me capping off the arms here um, so that I can fill them in. I decided to do the hair as well, um, but not the mouth when it's closed because um, it doesn't ever leave the lemon. So I felt like that was overkill a little bit. Then I came through and decided to add an arm onto this lemon in the foreground. He's like reaching out. He gets shocked when the hand appears and he's like, no, help me. I'll save you. Um, but then as he disappears, he just drops his hand in defeat because he knows that he has been defeated. He can't save anybody. So finally, then take that back into After Effects. Uh, oh, I changed the colors on this uh, front arm to orange. And then I took that into After Effects. Dropping the whole um, Adobe Animate file into After Effects allows you to bring in the separate layers. So you can see here, I have all the separate layers I made in my original design. And obviously, there's points here where the lemon gets dragged out of focus. Um, so what I did was I added a camera lens blur to the parts that are out of focus. This arm in the front lemon is always out of focus. So I changed it to a square um, iris type and then just cranked the 
um, lens blur up, I think to about 20 in the end, because it's quite a heavy effect. And that created, well, I just, I eyeballed essentially the amount of bokeh that was on the frame there. Luckily for me, that um, field of view, the field of focus, sorry, doesn't change. So that arm is always out of focus. So I just found the point where the hand here starts to drag the lemon out of focus. And I added another camera lens blur effect onto that layer, the main layer here of my lemon. Um, so camera lens blur effect, and I keyframed at 0%, went forward until the um, hand goes fully out of focus, stops moving backwards and starts moving down, which is about there. And then I turned that up again to about 20, which, which seemed a little bit overkill. I think I resolved on 15 or so. Or maybe I did go to 20. Who knows? <laughs> um, and then when he is dragged down below into the pit, that's it. It's good to go. We have pretty much finished. So let's take a look at the finished product. And there you have it. Just a basic little animation tutorial for you this week. I know this one was kind of a speed through, but there really isn't much to talk about here. You just take your footage, drop the frame rate and doodle on top of it. It's just a nice way um, of working inside Adobe Animate. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. And I'll see you next time for another episode of Tip Tap. Stupidly big thank yous to all my level 2 and above members WN62, Ian Costello, Rob V, Jason Corradi, MP, Dima Eva, Vola First, Melem Hoover, Josh C, Ursula Fermanska, The Saucier, Lali Lululo X, Andrew Hammond, Jenna Carey, Jarvis Animations, Relica M, Noreen Abdilla, Barbara Reznor, Lone Wolf 16, Era D, Political Psychology, Maybe Sharma Cross, Kevin Murphy, Mariam Devar, JK Digital Creations, Jeremy Stewart, and Tim Fitzgerald. <gasps> you guys are lovely, and wow, it's getting hard to do all of that in one breath. Delightful. Click the join button, become a member, and join the Tip Tut Zone, you lovely people. Subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.